welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of several Tudor history books. Okay, where am I taking you today? And is it going to be a bad one or a good one? Well, the bells are ringing out because it's going to be a good one. In Tudor history, Saturday the 30th of September, 1553, so in the reign of Queen Mary I, at three o'clock in the afternoon, Queen Mary I left the Tower of London to the sounds of guns firing and church bells ringing, just as my church bells rang there. This was her coronation procession, and it would see her processing from the Tower all the way through the streets of London to Westminster, where she'd spend her night at Whitehall before her coronation ceremony at Westminster Abbey the following day. The procession leaving the tower this day consisted of the Queen's messengers, trumpeters, esquires of the body, the knights of the bath, heralds, bannerets, the council, the clergy, the garter knights, the nobility, foreign ambassadors, merchants, soldiers, knights, and then the Queen's entourage. So a huge procession of people. In Mary's personal entourage were the Earl of Essex, acting as Mary's chief server, two knights with powdered heads and old-fashioned hats representing the Dukes of Normandy and Guine, Stephen Gardner and William Paulet carrying the seal and mace, the Lord Mayor of London carrying the gold scepter, the sergeant, and, sergeant at arms and the Earl of Arundel carrying the Queen's sword, and Sir Edward Hastings leading Mary's horse. Then came Mary herself. Contemporary John Stowe describes the Queen that day, describing how she was sitting in a chariot of cloth of tissue, drawn by six horses, all trapped with the like cloth of tissue. She sat in a gown of purple velvet, furred with powdered ermine, having on her head a caul of cloth of tinsel, beset with pearl and stone, and above the same upon her head, a round circlet of gold, beset so richly with precious stones that the value thereof was inestimable. The same call and circlet being so massed and ponderous that she was fain to bear up her head with her hand and the canopy was borne over her chariot. So her crown and uh, her call was so heavy because of the jewels that Mary had to hold her hand there to hold it sort of in place to help support it. Behind Mary, according to Stone, was another chariot having a covering all of cloth of silver, all white, and six horses trapped with the like. And in this chariot was Mary's half-sister Elizabeth and Mary's former stepmother Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's fourth wife. After them came ladies and gentlewomen riding on horses trapped with red velvet and their gowns and kirtles likewise of red velvet. Then more gentlewomen in crimson satin, and then royal henchmen robed in green and white, the Tudor colours. This mile and a half procession must have been quite an exciting spectacle for the citizens of London to see. Ambassador Simon Renard recorded in a letter to Philip of Spain how the streets were hung with tapestries and strewn with grass and flowers and many triumphal arches were erected along her way. The pageants and displays on Mary's route from the tower to Whitehall did include triumphal arches, a triumphal arch decorated with verses praising her accession created by the Genoese merchants. But there was also an image of Judith, the Israelite heroine at Cornhill, created by the Florentines, conduits running with wine at Cornhill and Cheap, and the singing of verses in praise of the Queen at Cornhill and Cheap. At St Paul's, the Queen was addressed by the Recorder of London and presented with a purse containing 1,000 marks of gold by the Chamberlain. John Hayward, the playwright, delivered a narration in Latin and English at the school in St. Paul's churchyard. And then at St. Paul's Gate, choristers held burning perfumed tapers. 
finally, the Queen reached Whitehall, where she took her leave of the Lord Mayor, giving him great thanks for his pains and the city for their cost. And then Mary retired for the day to prepare herself for her coronation. So another day, another moment of triumph for Queen Mary. She had just recently taken the throne from Queen Jane or Lady Jane Grey. So she'd been victorious and now was the time to celebrate that along with the citizens of London. So a happy event, another happy event on this day in Tudor history. Will it be happy tomorrow? I just don't know and you'll have to wait and see. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live and you can of course give this video a like. Thank you for following these videos, I really appreciate it. See you tomorrow, bye bye.